This video is going to cover the anatomy of the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. What I mean by the anatomy is that rather than the function, I'm going to focus on the wiring, how it's all plugged in, or how do the nerves get from the spinal cord to the reflectors. Sympathetic nerves exit the spinal cord from every segment between T1 and L2, and this is commonly referred to as a thoracolumbar outflow. Their path consists of two multipolar neurons which synapse in a ganglion outside the spinal cord. Then end at the effectors, which can either be smooth muscle, found in the blood vessels and viscera, or glands. The cell body of the first neuron, the preganglionic neuron, is found in the lateral horn of the spinal cord, with its axon exiting into the anterior or ventral roots, along with the somatic motor axons. The main site of synapse between pre- and post-ganglionic fibres is the sympathetic chain, a collection of ganglia that run up the length of the body either side of the vertebral bodies. Pre-ganglionic fibres enter the sympathetic chain and then synapse with post-ganglionic fibres which then exit and make their way to the effectors. Importantly, some pre-ganglionic fibres will ascend through the sympathetic chain before synapsing where others will descend. This way, the sympathetic outflow, which remembers only occurring between T1 and L2, can actually be distributed up to the head and neck, out to the upper and lower limbs, and down to the pelvic organs. So here, if we take a cross section of one spinal cord section, somewhere in between T1 and L2, off of the anterior surface of the spinal nerve, we can see a cross section of one paravertebral ganglia. So remember that this is part of this chain, the sympathetic chain, and so it will be continuous with the ganglion above and the ganglion below. So spreading out of the screen towards you and back into the screen and out the back of your computer or tablet or whatever. Post-ganglionic neurons transmitting sympathetic innervation to the limbs, to the body wall, um, example muscles causing the hair in your arms to stand on end, they will return from the sympathetic chain to the spinal nerve and then they will be distributed either via the ventral ramus or the dorsal ramus. Note though that only the ventral rami supply the limbs, only the ventral rami form the brachial or the lumbar and sacral plexuses. Therefore, all sympathetic innervation for the limbs must go via the ventral ramus. In my drawing here, I have the preganglionic nerve entering the sympathetic chain at the same level. But remember, keep in mind that it may actually have come from above or below. There is another route out of the sympathetic chain. This one supplies visceral organs only, not the body wall. Some nerves actually arise from the sympathetic chain directly and make their way to organs. These are called splanchnic nerves. Now, splanchnic is a term that's not specific to the sympathetic nervous system, so you will encounter it elsewhere. Splanchnic actually means organs or entrails, so therefore any nerves that supply organs are actually splanchnic nerves. Some splanchnic nerves leave the sympathetic chain as postganglionic fibres. For example, the cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerves that supply the heart and the lungs, these are postganglionic. These nerves are fully classified as postganglionic, sympathetic splanchnic nerves. However, some splanchnic nerves are actually preganglionic, sympathetic splanchnic nerves because the preganglionic fibre doesn't synapse within the sympathetic chain. They still need to synapse, so they synapse further downstream closer to the effector organs. And nice examples of this would be the thoracic and the abdominal splanchnic nerves, which supply much of the GI tract and pelvic organs. These actually say that's in pre-vertebral ganglia, named from the position in front of the vertebrae. In reality, they can be found associated with the front of the aorta. So admittedly, all of that is quite complicated quite conceptual and it's also very wordy. So here's a little review. Here are some landmarks that we've encountered in the sympathetic nervous system. 
Now we're going to connect the lateral horn of the spinal cord to each of the main effector areas over on the right hand side of the screen. If you feel like testing yourself, pause the video now and try it. Okay, here goes. So in order to supply the back, and what I mean by that is the area is sort of immediately down the sides of the vertebral column, it's not a very big area, our preganglionic fibre leaves the lateral horn, enters the paravertebral ganglia where it synapses, and now the postganglionic fibre will return to the spinal nerve and to the dorsal ramus and then to the effector. In order to get to the front of the body, or to the limbs, so the skin of the belly button or the big toe, we start at the lateral horn, synapse in the paravertebral ganglia, and then again the postganglionic fibres back from the spinal nerve into the ventral ramus, and then to the body. The nerves supplying the thoracic organs, so the heart and the lungs, they will originate in the lateral horn also. They also synapse in the paravertebral ganglia and then their postganglionic fibres pass straight across to the cardiothoracic organs. Last, for abdominal pelvic organs, these are supplied by nerves which leave the lateral horn. They also go into the paravertebral ganglia but they don't synapse there. Instead, they pass through and head to the prevertebral ganglia before synapsing, and then the postganglionic fibres head from there to the organs. Remember that the nerves supplying these organs, those are splanchnic nerves. So some of them are preganglionic, some of them are postganglionic. And in fact, you'll also find splanchnic nerves later that are nothing to do with the sympathetic nervous system. Can you remember the outflow of the nervous system? It's between T1 and L2. And also remember that the paravertebral ganglia that I've drawn there is just one blob. Remember that they all link into one chain, the sympathetic chain and the sympathetic trunk. So those are the big principles of the sympathetic nervous system. There are of course some exceptions, but hopefully this will help you understand the big picture. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.